Alright, uh, as most of you guys know, um, we are doing a, a Roma growing test under LEDs uh, at the Studio Logic Garden. And um, in continuing trying to research growing Roma tomatoes inside, um, I took a clone off of the strongest plant and uh, it's been in the power grower for about a week now. Um, and if you look closely at the plant, um, it has started to leaf curl uh, just like the other plants did when they were young. Um, but this one is under a T5, so um, I've eliminated the, the light source as the cause of the leaf curling. Um, this power grower is on a 30 minute on, 30 minute off schedule as opposed to the um, the ones under the LEDs are on uh, 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off. And I was just doing that to see if uh, the irrigation schedule could affect it. I have noticed a little bit of an increased growth rate in this one since I switched it to the 30 on, 30 off. Um, you know, I have, right now, uh, the EC in this system is uh, 1.2, and that's including a CalMag supplement and some um, flora blend. So, uh, still have not found the cause yet. Um, I am humidifying this tent just like the other one. Humidity stays a little bit lower in here uh, due to the uh, heat put off by the T5 lamp is higher so the relative humidity is lower in here. Um, I also still have my strawberry clones going on and I've been trying some germination and some sure to grow. Um, I do have some strawberry, uh, I'm sorry, some more aromas that germinated in the sure to grow. Uh, as well as some herbs. I got some oregano that germinated there and I'm trying some cilantro again. I've got some uh, peppers in here. Uh, pretty much all sorts of herbs. Basil and uh, other things. Things are starting to germinate. Not as quickly. Um, I was a little concerned by the sure to grow because the X holes were not cut in the center of the dibble holes so it was difficult to decide where to place the seeds and some of the things that have germinated in it have actually not been able to get rooted well and they've just kind of fizzled out uh, after they have germinated but this is in a flood drain system uh, it floods uh, roughly one two three four five six seven eight times a day because the you know sure to grow manual said that it uh, Flooding more often was probably a good idea, so it floods for 15 minutes, eight times during the light cycle. Um, you know, I've always had issues with germination inside um, in sterile media, be it rock wool, rapid rooters, and now I'm trying the sure to grow. I'm going to keep trying it. Uh, there's some things that I do like about the sure to grow. It doesn't itch, you know, like the rock wool does. It's easy to deal with. But I don't think that doing it in the trays is a good idea because it's very difficult to get it a consistent depth in there because of the soft nature of it. So probably next time I'll do it in like a, a flat tray with you know holes cut in the bottom. But just trying to find a new grow medium. Um, I'm concerned that the leaf curl in the tomatoes could be a function of the rock uh, of the hydroton because this plant when it was being rooted in the aero rail system did not have any leaf curl at all until I transplanted it into the hydroton and the power grower so uh, we'll, we'll see um, I'll tell you one thing I do love is this sure to grow hail because I've been able to root my strawberry plants in it very easily um, I also have started to try to convert my strawberry grow from the hydroton to the sure to grow hail um, you can see right here, I had a plant that was not rooted very well. It was kind of hanging out of the hydroton, so I just pulled the roots out and gave them a little trim and then put put it down in some hydroton better, and it's continued to grow, and hopefully it will sprout some new leaves and things, so that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, as you can see, the strawberry are still going strong. Um, I do, you know, if you don't trim these things once a week, they really get out of control. They really grow well. Um, produce a you know a whole lot of good tasting strawberries I'm still trying to figure out the best combination to get uh, ripe you know crisp strawberries sometimes 
Um, they get a little soft a little early. Looks like I got a strawberry down in here, right there. Looks pretty tasty. Mmm, good and sweet. Um, I found that stressing the plants out a little bit, you know, letting the EC climb, um, not filling up the nutrient solution as often. What I do is it starts out at about, uh, this is a little low, I'll probably add some nutrient, but it starts out at usually about like 1100 ppm, and then I'll let it get down, uh, drink the water all the way until I get to maybe like 1750, 1800 ppm, and that's when the strawberries really start to get tasty. But at that high of a ppm, the, the growth slows. So it's kind of a equilibrium to maintain between the two. That's all I got, guys.